I've created this um, with my set of favourite colours really, I keep getting drawn to them. Um, and then the drips that you can see, I've used the fluids that I've showed you quite a few times now um, over the top. don't know if they're going to stay or not, I just want to. I was just trying to create a, a starting point canvas. I drew out, this is my um, terrible sketch of an Indian from last time, if you remember. Hang on, doing it that way. But actually before that I had, can you see, no, this one. Um, I drew out this kind of head with a, a kind of angely birdie thing in its ear. So that was my little sketch and I thought I'd have a go at that today because I had nothing else planned and I kind of like the shape of it. So I wanted to show you the next stage of like when I just sketch out at first. So it's going to be by no means perfect, but this is just the starting point and I use the fluids and I use my sketch. It doesn't matter if this is wrong because it can, can be painted over, but it's how I get my initial face in. And as always, I've done a very simple face, a kind of almost straight down line, bit of a nose, and then almost straight down again, kind of an, a little line to indicate the mouth, but really quite straight down. And then a sharp, this is the chin that we all would die for. And then I've done this weird shape going on from there. So that's kind of her initial shape. I didn't want it to be traditional head and neck. So I've gone off to some kind of swirly, swirly shape down there. So that's her head in place. Um, <coughs> so I will have to do some um, stuff up there to, so that there isn't too much of a <coughs> bit at the top. I'm now going to try attempt my little birdie um, that's whispering in. I like to think of sort of on her shoulder. Just keep her informed. I will just check the comments in just a minute. I'll just get this main shape out. Okay, so as I said before, this is not exact. This is going to be. I'm using the white just because it stands out enough. Do quite a feathery wing, and so she's got one wing going here, and she's got another wing. right down there. Okay, so that's a fairly good starting point. Not sure about that head yet. But that's as much as my sketch does and then I put the sketch away. So gives me a, a reasonably good starting point and then I can just start etching away around it to try and pull the shape out a little bit more. So I I add my whites at this point. If you guys could do some shares that would be great. I haven't got the facility. So as before I'm gonna add the white to some of the colours. And we're gonna, and I will add black in afterwards, but I tend to start with white, just to start picking out the main shape. And that's when I can then give more, um, pay more attention to the exact shape and correct it a bit if it's wrong. So I'm not going for pure white at this point at all. And I'm not even going for the same color. I'm, still going on with the breaking it up. I want to have that in shape. Okay. 
So I'm not going out to the extremities of the canvas. I don't know what's going there yet. So again, just picking out the shape that I've just loosely sketched to see if it's right. Peace outside. I've said before, I live on a main road, it all happens there. <laughs> They're stopping outside. I think some of them are stopping at car. I'll keep you posted. Exciting drama. So you can kind of see how easy this is, and we could always paint back over again with the um, with the white outline Nose is dripping. That's not a big look. So, has that pulled out the. I think it has. And I shall do the same but on a kind of smaller scale <coughs> around the, the bird. Just to kind of make sure that the shape is correct. We'll blend that out later if it is. So I'm not sure about this head shape at the moment, so let's. Okay. It's not looking too bad. There she goes. Hi Tanya, how are you doing? Is my new shop open? I suppose it is now. Very exciting. So now what I'm going to do is spend some time making the inside of this face interesting. Using all my patterns, using my tools to create different bits because we know this bit's going to stay. So I want this bit to be a good bit. It's already got some nice bits in it from my original background painting. So those bits will stay, I like that. I'm just going to sort of add to them a little bit. There are some little areas that you probably can't see, but close up you can still see the canvas underneath, those little white dots. So I don't want those, obviously. So this is where the layers come in to fill. And I'm just using the edge of this tool at this moment to just create a mix match of patterns. This is my all time favourite yellow. I've had to, I've just reordered and I've ordered two this time because I get through so much of it and it's called Cad Yellow Deep Hue. It is just a really nice, warm feeling summer. I don't know, could go with autumn too, I think. I get through a lot of this yellow and a lot of this pink, this pink which is deep magenta, if anyone wants it. Quite like how this 
this is feeling as it is. I'm going to do more blendy than it. to show you different stages of my paintings each week because it's impossible to show you the sort of from start to finish because it is hours usually no always um so you've kind of seen where i've splattered all the paint on and done it random which is what i did half an hour before um and then i quickly dried it off the hairdryer so that you're not having to sort of see that bit so I thought I'd go to the next stage this week and show you sketching out my rough sketch and um, showing you how I'm then pulling that out of the canvas so that it really pops. So now I've sort of gone around the edge in a blurry white to make sure that the shape is right. Um, I'm now trying to make the inside more interesting inside it's her face <laughs> so i have spent quite a lot of time this week looking at um getting the best prints and what i'm fast coming to the conclusion of is that there was there is a company I've already um, registered with that I think do very nice called Society6 and it's on my website you can link to it that do very nice products such as um, duvet covers and clocks and I don't know iPads and you name it with artwork on it and it really comes out quite lovely but I'm kind of leaning towards um, for actual proper prints of the artwork going to going to an art company um, so that you really do get um, the quality so I've if anybody wants a decent print um, be it as just a print or uh, on canvas and I want to be able to offer both of anything that I've got at the moment I have got companies that I can contact that will do it for me and have done it for me on a sort of individual basis I can give you a quote, obviously no obligation, you just need to message me a rough size and whether you want it on canvas, box canvas like this, or whether you want it just rolled up, uh, obviously rolled up as a print would be much cheaper, I guess if you're ordering from abroad in terms of shipping. Um, but I've got papers coming so that I can choose exactly papers I want the prints on I want to sort of do it properly um, but I have got places in the meantime that I've been quite impressed with so you can just message me but obviously the, the originals are for sale too and they're on my website so just have a look but I think I'll be sticking with Society6 for the, um, they do a really lovely range of accessories and shower curtains and rugs and tapestries and all sorts of things, which I think this kind of art would look really nice on. I think I'm going to have to buy a duvet cover. I'm using finger so obviously this bird has to again contrast from the face otherwise it all becomes sort of part of the same thing so the bird is going to be more smooth and blended and I shall use the white um, fluid on the top to make it look a little bit more um, I don't know, spiritual, more faded and magical. 
this is the that white I'm talking about. And if you just add a tiny touch of water, it makes it go all kind of slicky in a good way. I've got to do something with that head because I'm not happy with this. Let's, let's try and get some shape going. So this is that white, the white fluid. Just wanna I don't want my original sketch lines showing, I'll have to go at some point over there to help me. Hi Deb, thanks for joining. i like in that red there, which means I might have to put more white around here. Massive feathers here. to lose that little Got this other really lovely golden um, fluid, and it's again a really warm colour. I use it because it looks a bit brown and a bit yucky, but then when you smooth it out, it goes all golden. It's lovely. The fluids give a real translucent feeling to them. 
you can still see all the layers underneath. I'm just adding water, blending it with my finger, helping just tie some of these elements together, dabbing it in some white fluid, gold fluid, and my kind of golden one, which gives this lovely yellowy golden glow back in the water to smooth it out. Use my fingers quite a lot at this stage. I like the finger painting's underrated. It's not just for kids at school. some black in places too so I'm just kind of working out where the black would go so to balance it out with the white tend to use black till last she's got a glowing chin I really like this red, that's really working for me and I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of that goldy fluid so it really pops. Blend that in. And then we'll add some orange, so a bit sort of fades out. And then some of my lovely yellow. Quite a clear definition shape for the bird now, bird angel. Deidre, hi Deb. Thank you for joining. I'll try to hop on at least once a week just to show you the processes of my creations. I'm literally just adding fingerfuls of water <coughs> and white titanium fluid paint to pick out this underwing. So then what I'll do is go with my paintbrush into that fluid. This is the original that I sketched out and just sort of go back in to create something more 
significant lines but I don't really want to pick it out as a perfect shape I don't think feathers work like that feathers are all on the move so you'll kind of get the, the motion It's <coughs> my little birdie in. It's not really in her ear, it's kind of on her ear. go through outlining to rubbing it out to outlining to rubbing it out until it sits right so that's there she'll probably have an eye here she'll probably have an eye too So far, I haven't added a scrap of black, so that's going to be the next. The face is starting to look the right shape now. I think this head is better. First few that were at the beginning, I had a little sketch that I did this in my sketchbook. I just made it up, and I haven't. I'm not using it as reference now. It was just a literary line drawing. Um, I like using simple figures, shapes, or even just like that. Like obviously, that's not how a head and neck should go but I quite like the curve of it, it works. Right. <coughs> Hi Shaz, how you doing? I was getting worried about you, I haven't heard of 
from you for ages. You got your rivals and puppies. Puppies start leaving home. Yeah, well, that's okay. Mum's all right because I was worried. I've messaged you a couple of times. I thought that's probably what it was. Message me when you've had some sleep. <laughs> Next year. A little bit of black. Now, I'm really umming and ahhing about that. I'm going to start with some hair. See what it looks like. Experiment, right? See what, what I'll do. Just start with a line, a very wonky, wobbly line, that's fine. Um, I think she might need some there. She's definitely going to need some here to help pick out that bird. So the black, obviously the black is there's something about the shadow. So I'm kind of doing underneath, but black right next to white is a fabulous contrast colour and really helps pop out the shape. So I've just really just tried out a few little bits. And I'm going to now go in with my sponge and just dab a little bit of black on it, but also colour. So it's not going to be like a neat black, it's going to be, at the moment I'm doing turquoise, for example. So there is a black in it and I'm just darkening up. I'm not making it a solid, thick black. And using the sponge can help me just blend it out. And I can see if that black, the dark, is working or not. And if it is, as I keep building up that sort of blended bit, I will end up going back in with a harder black line. But for now, I'm just seeing if it works by darkening up the area around it. Okay. I'm going to do the same at the bottom, this time with pink and black. So when you're thinking about composition on your page, you need to think about have you got enough, if you've got black hair, have you not, is there a big area that's got no black, in which case you might want to add a bit to balance your picture out, so not just black, whatever colour an area of your painting might be craving. Hi Eileen, just adding a little bit of water there just to help blend that out. Okay, and I can go back in with some colour around that. see them yeah you can see the bottom can you see the dark is starting to and I put it on very gradually you don't have to put it on gradually because you can of course paint over it even white in acrylics will go straight over the black once it's dry oh good See, and that's really like pushing forwards that shape, emphasising it. So I think we need the same. This under here, so that it will make a feature of the fact that it's 
I don't know, an organic shape, is that the right word? Just not, not your usual shape. So we've done a bit of popping there. I'm going to do a bit of popping here. Okay. Get some of that excess black off. Um, all of this can be just blended out. <coughs> it's just a question of letting it dry off a bit first, and then you can put colours on top. So if it's, if it's gone too mad, it doesn't matter. You just wait for it to dry. Don't try and do it when it's not dry, because it will just get blacker and blacker and blacker. But. Blending that colour, that orange in, just tapping it in a bit, knocking that back. I'm not worrying about the outside background at the moment. This bit round here will be dealt with kind of last. Or if I'm waiting for areas to dry, I'll go back in <coughs> around it while it's drying. I didn't want this bit to be like a solid black dark area but it does need to stand out from the main face so. okay. <coughs> now I'm going to probably do I think white more white up that end I'm going to try hi Ruth Ruth, oh my goodness, that video you posted. Ruth um, thought her cat room was getting particularly messy at night, so she set a camera up to see what was going on. And there's a badger coming through a cat flap. Eating all the cat biscuits. <laughs> Unbelievable. So we've got a bit of white there. I'm going to just add some water and it will just help, I always kind of dry brush it out, scratch it out at this point, just so it fades into something. Lighter, see if that works, it probably does. See, but now you can see, balance-wise, this corner is craving some white. You can see, as soon as you put some white on, that looks better. And this corner is probably craving some black. I'll do some black drips for this one. This is my fluid. got a little screw top on sometimes the paint dries in the nozzle so you just have to pick it off and let's see I've had a problem with this black before it's a bit of coercion okay I 
I like the randomness of that. What I really like about these fluids is that with this nozzle, let me just show you a bit. It's probably not the best colour because it's not. I can actually randomly paint with it as well. And it has a bolder line. <coughs> it has a bolder line than the normal acrylic. So I can do dots. I did it with the, um, yeah, I've got a purpley one here. Yeah, it's just, it just gets clogged up here because it dries. I guess you could just tiny bit picked off and then it's fine. So, do these lovely. And they can stay or they can go, but quite likely. Let's get some drips going on down there. Do you like the drips? But the other effect that is very cool is when you add water to this with the mister. Hi Anna. Is that see I can always add drips on top but what? like that. But sometimes I do this stuff and then it kind of looks like it's messing it up a bit. It doesn't matter, it's just another layer isn't it? I can come back and and you could direct your spray to make it go in the way you want it to go. And if it suddenly goes violently terribly wrong, you can always mop it up with tissue and it will come off. I actually quite like that. Not sure about that around there. I quite like that. Obviously I don't want these drips going off the face here. I don't think that would look right. But they dry quite quickly. And you can blend them in. It's not working. Because the translucency, you can still see all of what's underneath, which is really like that. So we do different in the face to what I'm doing over there. try out getting a different effect. Sometimes then you get this like happy accident like that is really nice. And I'm gonna put some of this. I'm probably gonna put some more drips on it. white drips over here. I'm just using the nozzle again to just draw in this wing and it's going to drip and I, I, I've got a feeling that's going to be another happy accident. This. And that probably needs blending in. Fine. Saved. And 
now we've got this kind of, I feel like perhaps I should extend the feathers from the original drawing. Just expand, ex yeah, so the, drip, the drips help give the feeling of a real angel wing. Like that a lot. And I haven't decided what to do with her. If she's going to have a head of hair or her own. I don't know. We'll see. See you playing. Lots of playing, and I see that was all a bit alpha, not very controlled. And so then I go back in with a paintbrush and try and tidy some of it up. It's all a bit take it in turns. Make a mess, clear it up. You should have at least two brushes on the go, one for the dark stuff and one for the light stuff. Otherwise it all contaminates. Definitely the white needs a brush of its own. I'm like, maybe I should have some easily puff of air coming out of that, maybe. But even though I'm not taking away the black hair, by putting a line of white right next to it, makes it stand out loads more. I've got to wait, I want to put a line of white in there to, for, for the same effect, but it's still really heavily wet at the moment, so I'm going to wait, otherwise it will be mud. Okay, what are we doing with all this here? I think she can't have drips in her face, that looks a bit funny. So while it's wet, let's water it down so that we can still see the colours that were underneath. Thank you. 
gorgeous turquoise. There it is. I like just playing around inside the main shape, just adding the different colours, rubbing them in together and so on and just seeing what they look like. Sometimes do it with card, stamping, whatever tools you've got really. Today I've just used my sponge brush and my finger. So, and then the paint bottle itself. And there's all this lovely sunshiny yellow over here and if I'm to just put some, break it up with some contrast of that it's really it really pops up Sure about the tear for the eye. So let's help that along. Okay. I hope you've got out of today something that you've kind of seen. There's no, because I've really taken you right through getting a sketch on to picking out the shape, to playing a bit inside the shape. I'm just trying out what works, what doesn't work, getting some white, getting some contrast. I hadn't planned on those drips, but now they're there, I actually quite like them. So they're probably going to stay. Um, that, not so much at the moment. Um, I think I don't, I'm not sure I like that line there but again it's like it's what's working what's not working and if it's not do something else just paint over it change it change it up and that's fine it really is always about kind of what is working concentrate on what's working rather than what's not working and work on that and don't be reticent to just clearing out if that shape wasn't working at all I'd just get rid of it you don't hold on to your initial idea if it's not working an idea is just an idea and it can go you know like quite often you spend an evening thinking I do. Sometimes I lie awake at night and I've got a plan, a creative plan in my head, and I'm convinced it's going to be the best thing ever. And then I get up and I think, what was I thinking? I spent hours on it, you know, at night, not sleeping, tossing and turning, formulating the plan. And then I wake up the next day and it all seems like madness. And that's what I mean about. An idea can seem okay for five minutes, or for a day, or for a year. But don't be scared to move on and just leave it. So I'm 
going to finish up. I think I've done an hour. Um, I'll probably, I've got a lot more messing around with this to do. And I shall show you the results later if I carry on today. If not tomorrow, we'll see how today pans out. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me, guys. And um, I'll see you again, hopefully, sometime next week. Try to keep it the same on a Thursday if nothing comes up. But thank you very much.